making a Stuart Models steam plant at part 34, working on the castings of the new Stuart Models 504 boiler and making an exhaust pipe fitting. When I say new, I do not mean new old stock. This is a completely new boiler which is a reissue from Stuart Models. And I'm surprised it took so long. Stuart 504 boilers have always been really good. In a previous episode, I cleaned up the mounting plate castings. They needed a bit of fettling because they were quite scabby. This is a shot of the feet underneath, and if I mount the boiler like this, it's probably going to fracture the lugs on the bottom. For almost all of the clean-up jobs on this boiler, I use my 4-inch belt sander, also known as a linisher. I temporarily fitted a side plate to see what it looked like. And this old side plate didn't fit very well, but the new ones are shaped to fit. After initially cleaning up the castings, I put them on top of the box that contained the sides on the shelf. This is the previous image showing the original feet of the boiler. But now they look like this, which is a lot better. And the boiler can be bolted down to the baseboard without any fear of fracturing the lugs. You can tell that this is a reissue because the mounting lugs have holes in them, not slots. I need to drill a hole in this casting to accommodate the pipe from the condenser's exhaust outlet. You can just drill a quarter of an inch diameter hole and poke a pipe up inside there, but I didn't want to do that. I'm going to fit a proper union connector. It's a much better way of doing it. As I start to drill the first hole, I realise that there is a slight problem. The cast part is at a bit of an angle, it's not flat. But nevertheless, I carried on anyway. This is a quarter of an inch diameter hole and I'm drilling all the way through the cast iron. And don't forget, when you drill cast iron, do not run the drill too fast. This speed is OK and I'm just putting gentle pressure on it all the way. Because I'm going to fit a steam union into this boiler, I didn't want the top of this part of the casting to slope. So here I'm doing something that you really should not do. I should have removed the casting from the drilling machine and put it in the milling machine. Instead, I held the quill of the drilling machine very rigid and used the end mill to carefully level the surface. It worked for me. Many years ago, I had a bright yellow hobby mat milling machine, and in those days I had a Fobco Star drilling machine where you could lock the quill. And I used to prefer milling in the Fobco Star drill than I did in the hobby mat milling machine. But I don't recommend it. This is a great alternative if you can do it. I taught myself how to file many years ago, and I'm using a fairly coarse file to completely file the area flat. Using the end mill just speeded up the process because I removed the skin with that. And I mean the skin of the casting, not my skin. Here I'm drilling the hole a little bit bigger. This is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. After I'd done that, without removing the part from the drilling machine, I started to thread the hole manually in the drilling machine using a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap. Once the casting was partially threaded, I removed it from the drilling machine and continued using a spanner. This is not very good practice at all. I just couldn't find a socket at the time that fitted on the end of the tap. As you can see by the number 8 on the spanner, it's an 8mm spanner. And although it doesn't fit the tap very well, it seems to work. But it's very laborious. I have a better idea. I will sit and look at the tap for a while. I could hammer the end of a piece of tube to go over the end of the tap. I preferred this method, I just used a smaller chuck. The one in the drilling machine was too big and fouled the casting. Once I'd finished threading the hole, I wanted to smooth out this area of the casting. And hopefully when it's all painted, it should look like I've never done this and that the casting was flat in the first place. My weapon of choice for this job is an 80 grit flapper wheel, because they remove the metal but they're not too violent. I kept repeating the process until I couldn't feel the ridge. And here's a finished job, quite a smooth transition between the flat part and the sloping part. The next part of the job involves fitting a commercial double steam union like this one. I'm also fitting a copper washer. It doesn't really need one, it just looks good. I haven't tightened it up fully because I'm going to immediately remove it. And here's a gratuitous shot of my small barco spanner removing the fitting and it doesn't round the edges. Time for a bit of an interlude. This is the base of the condenser and I wasn't happy with the soldering so I reheated it and cleaned it up using a small paintbrush dipped in water. 
This clip shows the exhaust outlet on the condenser on the right hand side and the steam union fitted into position underneath the chimney. When I fit everything together I will be using a PM Research cast elbow and some PM Research threaded tubing. In the last episode I put the cap from the water tank into some cellulose thinners or gun wash. All of the paint quickly fell off this piece of brass and now it looks like this. Very nice indeed. Time for a loose fit of the parts on the baseboard. I didn't want the condenser to match the water tank because they're both entirely different units. And because the water tank is a genuine Stuart Models part, I didn't want to modify that. I need to slightly modify this commercial union before I fit it into the boiler by drilling one end of it out to a tapping size for a quarter by 40. Here's the original fitting and here it is once I drilled out the other end. Time now to thread it. I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap for this job. And in this clip, I'm making sure that the PM Research threaded tube fits my thread. And it does, which was a bit of a surprise because normally I have to re tap PM Research fittings because, as far as I'm aware, the thread angle is different. Health and safety, I've removed the part so I don't poke my eye out. And here you see the finished job. Now it's time for a bit more fettling and some filling. For filling the casting, I'm using some JB Weld. I do like this stuff, it's very strong and it seems to be more than heat resistant enough for the jobs I use it for. I also filled a couple of blow holes underneath this part. Now I need to wait 24 hours before I can continue by rubbing down the JB Weld and painting the castings. So I'm going back in my cupboard and I will be back tomorrow. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.